What's going on, y'all? So lit. I just don't appreciate. <laughs> I don't appreciate what y'all doing to this show. And I get it. I get it. It's just that the family can never, never have something good. Y'all got my man going through it, even though he brought it on himself. Okay. I got to, I just got to admit that, you know, and the positive thing out of all of this, oh baby, I can't wait to see what Charlie about to do because y'all done lit a fire under Charlie's ass now. But this is Queen Sugar. Oh my God, I'm so in distraught. Like I'm in mourning right now because I don't know what's going to happen to the family farm, okay? Oh, anyway, this is Queen Sugar, season six, episode seven. They will bloom and welcome you, okay? Um, we see Ralph and Darla. They outside the police station. I said, wait a minute, what happened? Girl, they said, listen, let's just go ahead and um turn ourselves in for some questionings or whatever. At least Ralph, okay? They're about to turn them in or whatever so that they can do some questionings and all this stuff. Um, Darla said, that's my man and I'm going to stick beside him because that's my baby daddy. And I said, that's right. You do what you got to do, you know? And then... um. Charlie, next thing you know, we see Nova in her crib and it's a mess, okay? I said, listen, if somebody did what happened to Nova to my stuff and then I have to come home after that, it was a traumatizing thing to actually have it happen. And then to come home and see the after effects of the way that they just destroyed my stuff, they want her to leave. They, 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 they terrorizing her at this point. They want her to leave. Okay. And that put a push a person like me. I would have to heavily debate. Should I go or should I just stay? Okay. Because I would, I would be having PTSD at this world. You know, the way like she was asleep when they came in. Okay. Can you imagine being asleep and, um, somebody just busting into your house like that? Oh my God. The trauma that that is. Meanwhile, you got Micah over there. Let me just get Micah stuff out the way right quick, okay? Because it was cute. <laughs> Micah is in a room, you know, going over his little presentation with Isaiah, okay? And, you know, um, I guess it's something that they got to do for class and all this stuff or whatever. And so, at this point, Professor, Miss Professor Lady, she come through. And she was like, oh, hey, Micah. How you doing? You doing good? He was like, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just, um, you know, practicing and going over the presentation that we got later on. Okay, you know, I just came over here to get my purse. Isaiah looking like this. <laughs> I'm looking like, girl, what? Okay, what's going on? She was like, all right, I'll see you later. I said, uh-uh, I don't like the way you was talking to him because you was getting flirtatious vibes and everything, and you the one that cut it off with him, okay? And I was just like, uh-uh. Meanwhile, you know, Isaiah, he, his homeboy being there, he was like, yo, you got some stuff going on. You want to talk or whatever? He was like, nah, that's cool. You could go do whatever you got to do. And then at this point, they're about to leave, so, you know, they dab it up. And just because he slightly hugged Micah and Micah is facing the door, Isaiah back is to the door. Two dudes come walking past and they looking like, what? And they just stop like, what? Mind you, they wasn't even really hugging like that. It's like when dudes dab each other up and all that stuff. And so Micah saw the way that they paused and looked like, boy, what? And he just went on ahead and fully hugged him like, and what? Okay. We have to normalize letting men show affection to other men and it be a neutral thing. It's not a sexual thing. It's just a friendship thing. It's just a, you know, men, you can show affection to other men. And that does not mean that your sexuality is in jeopardy. Okay. Stop this fragile masculinity type of stuff. All right. I was here for Micah doing that. Okay. Like, don't let them dudes punk you or whatever meanwhile we get to the day of the presentation right <laughs> he up there you know talking about how basically black folks a lot of black folks still enslaved okay you know talking about the correlation from back in the past to the present she he get the with uh you know his presentation and stuff and then the professor sitting there i said first of all i forgot that we was in a pandemic even though i saw the mask because it was like five students up in there okay it was five students in there and truth be told it probably was an advanced class and a lot of advanced classes don't have that many students in it okay but at this point <clears throat> you know he giving a little presentation and everybody clap 
Miss Professor was like, okay, but cool, but wait a minute, you know, now how are we still enslaved? You said black folks are still enslaved. What, 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 what is that? You know, he was like redlining, can't get loans for the banks for houses, the rents, the this, the this. He was going down the line, okay? I said, oh, Micah did his research. Now, let me tell you something. You was really doing your stuff, okay? When you can just flat off the cuff and don't have to think about just giving the answer and it just rolls off your tongue and it's correct. I said, yes, Micah, she better give you that A, okay? He said, listen, I'm finna show y'all I earned this A by actually studying, not doing her, okay? That's what this is. Meanwhile, she was so impressed and everything, you know, she was like, okay, good. Class dismissed, we'll see you next time, okay? Bye-bye, you know, Micah is the last one leaving because he gotta, you know, put his stuff up after he got through with his presentation and Miss Lady come over there and was like, you've grown Wrong so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, what are you doing later? You, you wanna come talk? You wanna come do I said now excuse me, now let me say something. <laughs> Micah said, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? She was like, You're good. She was so offended, like, bitch, what? <laughs> are you do, do you see this? You're good? You gonna pass this up? You was the one that was bringing me flowers for my birthday, and you going to pass this up? Girl, Micah said, yeah, like I said, and like you said, I'm grown, right? I've grown, okay? So, I'm good. And he walked out. Mind you, Isaiah was standing out there looking. He just laughing and everything. I said, Isaiah, don't laugh because you that ain't your man, okay? don't That ain't your man right now. Not yet. But at this point, I was sitting here like, listen, <laughs> I don't know if I would have been as strong as Micah was because... Especially if this lady was saying like her, I would have said, you know what? What time you want me over there? Okay, you know, we what 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 the hell? One more time can't hurt. Okay, like goodbye sex or some shit like that. Like it was just I just would have gave me in. I'm I'm sorry. I, 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 I listen, I'm weak like that, okay? I'm just I'm weak like that. Anyway, moving on from that. All right, we get to uh Billy and her father, you know, she's um doing some things, getting some paperwork together, you know, uh Prosper come up in there and tell her, Hey, so what's going on? She was like, Yeah, I'm getting this all together. Uh, she's supposed to be going back to work in the next month or so. And so that means, you know, she'll be on the way going back home to Chicago. And he was like, okay, cool. You know, and he brings up the fact that he wanted to talk to her the day before, but she ran out of there. And this was the, when it was revealed what happened between her and Jimmy Dale. And, you know, she was like, I wanted to tell you, but basically you wasn't trying to hear it at that point. And when they was trying to get into it, you know, the phone rings and then it's Prosper getting a phone call from Hollywood and Hollywood trying to tell him what's going on with Ralph Angel. And we see the progression of Billy and Pros Prosper's relationship because I think it was last week. Yes, it was last week. Last week, Vi and Prosper came in and interrupted a daughter father's date that was going on and he didn't shut it down he just let it happen this time he told hollywood listen before you get into all the logistics and the specifics about what's going on with ralph call me later on tonight because i got some more important things that i need to handle right now okay and he was focusing his energy and his time on billy and they wind up having a conversation about you know what went on with jimmy dale and the fact that you know um, he was a typical person that made things seem like it was okay. Like he was a cool type of person, you know, the way that they actually came in contact with him because he was with Vi and, you know, they would always go over there to Vi place. And, you know, while she's over there, that's when Jimmy Dale would try to, you know, ask her certain type of questions like, so what you plan on doing when you get older and when you grow up and when you, you know, get out of school and you do this and you do that. She didn't take it as nothing, but he was just, you know, trying to ease it up in there, get her defense down or whatever, make it seem like he can, you know, she can trust him and everything. And, you know, he tried to assault her, but, you know, she, she defended herself and, you know, Prosper, he felt bad. He realizes the way that he handled it wasn't correct. And his response was, you know, he didn't say nothing to her, but he should have. And his whole thing was, you know, back then, him and Jimmy Dale and Ernest, they were friends. And, you know, he didn't even know that Jimmy Dale was out there doing all the stuff that he was doing, you know, philandering and, you know, cheating and doing all of that. And it's like, what would he have said? And he should have said something then. And she was like, yeah, all you did was treating me like I was, you know, the uh, black sheep or whatever. Like uh, what people were saying, the rumors was going around was true. And he was like, I just thought that they would die down. 
You know what I'm saying? I just thought they would die down and people would not think of it. She even said her mama basically blamed her saying it's because of the way she dressed and stuff. And I said, wow. And it was like, that's how your mama thought, you know, it was a different time. I know she didn't truly mean it, but you know, and we've heard people say that even till this day, people still say that about people who get assaulted or whatever, that it's because of the way they're dressed. Okay. It's not, I don't care if you go outside, butt booty hole naked, it does not give you the right to touch that person to do anything to their body without their consent you know what i'm saying so and people tell this day does not do not understand that but i do like the fact that they are now opening up to each other he is now trying to understand her he is apologizing and seeing the errors of his ways as a father that wasn't truly there to protect his daughter and when she need the protection the most he basically turns his back on her for his friends okay and for what everybody else the approval of what everybody else was saying you know and that wasn't right. And so it's like now because he's in his later his his later years, you know, he want to make things right. He wants her to stay a little bit longer. And she's like, OK, cool. You know, I said, that's nice. That's nice. They got that out the way. Um, Meanwhile, <laughs> let's get to Ralph because the bulk of this whole situation. But let me go to this. Celine popped back up. Celine popped back up in the picture, y'all. Um, she at some type of facility or whatever. It looked like a little rehab facility or a place for, you know, uh, I don't know, shelter or whatever. It looked nice for the most part. Okay. And, you know, by talking to her, she was like, you know, you scared me or whatever. I didn't know where you went. She was like, I was just embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. She said, you should be. Because after all the stuff that I did for you, putting you up in a home, uh, in a place and putting all the money on you, I said, Vi, go off. Okay? Because Vi got red earlier in the episode. And she needed to be get red. But let me tell you something. Vi has been getting red down this whole season. And we have to come to terms with the fact that Vi sometimes need to get red the fuck down. Okay? Because sometimes she oversteps her boundaries. You know? But in this situation, she came for Celine. Like, she put it all out there. Like, how could you do something like this to me when I'm trying to help you? You know, Gabriel's in school or whatever. And you see the dynamic between Vi and Celine change. Okay? Celine is sitting there trying to apologize and say, you know, Hollywood, he didn't even accept my advances. He pushed me off or whatever. You got a good man. She said, uh, he, she was like, you got one of the last good men. She said, you don't got to tell me nothing about my husband. I said, damn, Vi. <laughs> Vi, Vi was trying to not seem so cold hearted like she wasn't in her feelings, but she truly was still in her feelings. At the same time, you know, trying to seem like, okay, I still somewhat care about you. But because deep down, because she went through the same situation that Celine went through. So, of course, she's going to have a soft spot, especially for her her son. You know, I don't, but I didn't have kids when she was going with Jimmy Dale. Okay. Mind you, she told us Jimmy Dale got with her when she was barely out of high school. And so when she's saying that, that made me go back to the whole um um Billy situation. It's like... Why would you think, like, you should have, your husband basically did the same thing to you that he did to Billy. He got you when you were young, okay? He was much older than Vi, you know? And so I'm just like, oh, just put two and two together. But, you know, she was younger. I don't know. It was a different time, I guess. Um, Moving on, she just basically, you know, Celine, once again, she really, truly apologized and um, you know, she was just saying how she wants to get better. She want to get better. She want to become a strong woman, just like Vi. And Vi was like, you can do what you need to do, okay? All you got to do, just continue on the path that you're going, okay? But at this particular moment, I hope and pray that you get better. And I hope and pray that you get situated in a better situ uh, uh, circumstances and stuff. Uh, I wish you and Gabrielle the best, but I can't see y'all no more because I got family stuff that's going on that's more precedent. I said, wow, <laughs> Val was basically what that translated into. Yeah, thank you for the apology because you needed to. But right now, your services are no longer needed and my services will no longer be given. Goodbye. I wish you all the best and I'm out. Okay. That's basically how she ended that. I said, wow, Val, you know, you did better than I did. Let me, I be, I be thinking to myself, like when I be looking at some of these, uh, some of these situations and I be like, you better than me. You better than me because I wouldn't, I wouldn't. And I'm just sitting here like, damn, Ashley, are you really this cold hearted or 
am I practical or what? What is it? What is it? Because it's like, damn, Ashley, you just went no. Because uh uh, once you do me wrong, it's over and done with. I ain't got no feelings for you, okay? No, especially when I do something like this that Vi did for her. Uh uh, you didn't you didn't cross the major line, so we ain't got time for that. Meanwhile, we get to the meat and potatoes of the episode, which was Ralph Angel. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, he turned himself in for questioning. Charlie had to call Nova to tell her to come down there to the um police station because the family was about to rally up uh, around him. Charlie was coming down there with her lawyer. She sees that Darla is sitting in the um, police station waiting on Ralph to come out. And she was like, I wish y'all would have had told me first before y'all came down here to the police so that um he could come with a lawyer. And she was like, no, he not um he didn't get arrested or whatever. He's just going in for questioning. And I said, that's fine and everything, but I still wish you would have had a lawyer and all that. You know, but truthfully and thankfully, you know, Ralph was able to come out, you know, on his own. Uh, Charlie was able to bail him out, whatever bail that he had. I said he had bail. He had they was about to put him in jail. Okay, I mean, he did participate in the theft and all this stuff, but wow, I thought y'all said it was just questioning. Y'all actually was about to lock his ass up, you know? And so, at this point, you know, um, Charlie said she did have the, uh, wanted the family to come down at the police station, but since Ralph got out, we're going to have them reconvene at the house, okay? And she was like, you need to tell us what's going on. So, back at the house, baby. This, I do not understand the reason why Queen Sugar has never been, to my knowledge, nominated for an Emmy nomination for acting. Because acting, cinematography, and all of that. Because, baby, the emotions that they evoked this episode alone and throughout the season, from episode one, season one, it is everything. Like... I don't know i don't know i think you know the people be hating people be hating that's all i feel like you know people be hating but hey we 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 we, we get our own awards with the image awards and stuff like that but moving on ralph because ralph get up in there and let me tell you something kofi be crying kofi be crying them lips be shivering i be like oh baby you did this to yourself though but you know what wound up happening he said that he was like no Pandemic kind of hit me hard. I didn't know it was going to be like that. Then the crops wasn't coming in the way that they needed to. So I needed some money. Had to go get some payday loans. Then I was falling behind on the payday loans. So I had to do what I had to do to provide for my family. I'm sorry for getting us into this, you know, because my pride, you know, and my ego. Bitch, if I said something, like, you could have came to the family and you could have did this. He was like, oh, but you the one that told me that I wasn't a man, huh? You the one that told me that, huh? So I had to go out there and do what it's supposed to be for a man, right? I said, oh. <laughs> Val was sitting there like this. I mean, I did say that. I mean, I ain't mean for you to do all that, but I did say that. And I had to remember, we are on episode seven, and Ralph and Vi has yet to have that conversation, okay, about, you know, about what happened with between them two when they got into it over Blue. He even brought it up. He was like, you said I was less than a man for sending my son out to school to be better. You know what I'm saying? And so what? I was just like, wow. Okay, Vi really couldn't say nothing at that point, you know. And he had to put out the, you know, uh, uh, it was the Landry's, you know, Sam, he he messed up my uh, crops or whatever. Well, how you know that? Because I got the soil tested and it was pesticide. Oh, okay. Well, how can you prove it? I didn't want to say nothing because I couldn't prove it yet. I didn't want to say that until I could prove it and all that. I said, that was good. Don't say nothing until you can prove. We can't be throwing out these allegations and, you know, they can't be proven true or not, you know? So, at this point, it all comes down. Like, Hollywood was so pissed, okay? Ralph told us they can't prove nothing because they ain't got me on camera. I made sure that the cameras was off. I was like, all right, you know, at least you're a little smart right then and there. And at this point, it gets brought out that Theo has already gotten out of jail. And not only did he get out of jail, he only had one phone call. And after that phone call, he got out of the jail and all his charges have been dropped. 
Why? Because that phone call was to Sam Landry. Mind you, they went to Sam Landry's stuff and that's who they're stolen from. Okay. And I'm just sitting here like, wow, Theo really set him up. Theo set him up. Okay. That's all to it. That's all to it. Meanwhile, there was another, um, you know, Val was like, listen, I go down there. Cause at first Charlie was like, I'm gonna go down there. My Lord gets and talk to Sam. And Val said, no, nah, Sam, we go back. And he owed me some shit. And he know, and it's time to remind him. So I'll go. Hollywood was like, no, nah, Vi, I'm going to go. She was like, you can come with me. Okay, we ride or die up in this thing. No matter what it said, I love you. And then she turned to, um, you know, Blue uh, Ralph and was like, I love you too. He, I love you too. I was like, oh, that was cute. Okay, that's what we need. We need everybody to come together, bitch. All right? So, you know, they go down there to visit Sam. And he basically was like, I don't give a fuck. Okay, listen, the border laws that had the upper hands against us for many a times, okay? You know, with many a times where he, that y'all done came in and had the upper hand and, 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 and took the wool underneath our feet and everything, the rug underneath our feet and all that stuff. And, and this time, you just ain't gonna win, okay? Because we got that man on that damn camera. That's how come Theo got out. Because, and that's how come Ralph's still doing what he doing. Because he was caught on camera. It was a secondary camera that shut back on after he cut the stuff off from the inside. I said ain't this about a bitch and we was all like so theo knew about this theo was working in cahoots with sam that's all that it came down to i said this is some bullshit all right i said i've been saying as soon as theo came into the picture don't trust him and as soon as you figured out what it was the job was going to be and who the product it was going to be you should have literally said no and found another hustle. I don't care how deep it was, okay? You know these people play dirty, all right? And that's what it is with, um, you know, Ralph. He should have known better. You sitting up here crying about how you don't want to go back to jail. You got a family to support and all of this. But you put yourself in this situation. Yes, yes. You were broke. Yes, you were, you know, drowning in debt at this point, okay? You was drowning in debt. We all are. We all are. But we open up our mouths and we ask for help. We reach out. We look for different type of programs, forgiveness programs, delays, this or that. You have so many resources in that family. That could have helped, but y'all was on a little shaky grounds. I get that. She would have probably had to, it could have do something your way. Charlie could have did something. You know what I'm saying? Darla made an option, but you didn't want to take nothing from Darla's parents or whatever because of that pride. And sometimes that pride would be our downfall okay and we have to let that go sometimes and it's just like <sighs> ralph this all could have been avoided okay basically you know um sam was like the way to get this out because he already a felon he gonna go to jail he gonna go to jail for a long time if they uh you know do what they do they got to sign the farm over if you sign the farm over we'll drop all this stuff and i said what I knew that's all that he been wanting since season one. The Landry's wanted the borderline land, okay? That is what it wanted. There been this division against the family, and I think they kind of family, some type of, you know, generations, generations down, whatever. They literally family, too. And so they just wanted all of that land. And the borderlines, you know, proved that they own that land and now this is a way for the Landry's to get that land okay and you know Hollywood was trying to be big and bad and say I will get you for fraud and all this stuff and you did this and, and, and uh agriculture terrorism and shit like that then Sam said what type of woke stuff you talking about this that woke stuff <laughs> I said not woke not woke this is the second time today I didn't heard a white person say something about being woke I was looking at the morning show okay and they was on there talking about woke Twitter and all this stuff. I said, what? Y'all white people, stop it. Okay, stop it. You know, just don't do it, you know? Um, because it sounds weird. It sounds weird. But, you know, at this point, they had to take it back to they had to take it back to um, you know, how, what's his name? Ralph and let him know what it was. Because 
like Sam said, you can't prove it. And if you want to go through all the court system, it's not going to be looking good for everybody that's in your family. You got Micah that's in school. You got Blue at this new school. You got Vice Place. You got Charlie going down the line trying to get into the Congress and stuff like that. Her political aspirations. You and your real spy. I said, damn, Sam, you've been keeping tabs on this whole family. He said that's what family does. I said, oh, okay, cool. You know, moving right on, moving right along. So at this point, they telling Ralph this. Ralph like, no. No, what about, I can't believe y'all even thinking about this. Well, I said, nigga, get the land up at this point. I'm sorry, I don't want to have to get a land up, but it's rather get the land up or you go to jail for the rest of your life and not see your kids being grown. Not even seeing your baby being born. Darla even had to say that. You don't want to go through the same thing that we went through with Blue. We both wasn't there in his uh, formative early years, okay? So, no, no. I understand this is, y'all going to give up the legacy like that. You fuck the legacy up like that. I said, nigga, you we in this? I love you, baby, but you, you put us here, okay? You put us here because of your ego. That's what it is, because of your pride, all right? And now your pride won't let you just go ahead and sign this over. I get it. It hurts, okay? Because it means like you failed a little bit. But sometimes we got to fail to get back up, okay? We got to fall down to get the fuck back up, and then we come back 10 times better, okay? You'll come back and take this shit and then some from Sam, okay? You got to think on this stuff. We got to think about this shit for right now, all right? And then think that long term okay this just a little this just a little tumble this just a little tumble okay but right now we need you out of jail you know and when hollywood got up in his ass and said the reason why this is going on because you did it they got you on tape i don't care what the white man did and what injustices is but you did it and they got you on tape i said oh it needed to be said it needed to be said okay and so you know he walked out uh, Darla had to get up in his ass too. You know, you make me mad. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I try not to say it, but at the end of the day, bitch, you made me fucking mad because of the shit that you did. You know, you put our life in jeopardy, but I'm gonna still be here for you. Okay. He was like, nah, go ahead and say what you got to say because I deserve it. I said, yes, you do. Okay. Yes, you do. I said, Darla, give it to him. Cause I wanted that to give it to him. Cause I would have told his ass up. But anyway, moving on from that. Uh, swallow your pride, boo-boo. Swallow your pride. Moving on from that, we see, uh, Charlie goes over there to Nova's house and she was just trying to, you know, check in on her. And Nova was just like, I'm not okay. And she was like, girl, what? I mean, everybody's not okay after what happened. She was like, no, I'm really not okay. She said, what's going on? Like, Nova was shook still. I told you, mama got PTSD, okay? She is traumatized. Girl, she opened up the door. She said, listen, the police came in and they broke into my house and they tore that shit up, okay? Yesterday, mind you, Charlie looking like, what the hell? And I said, Charlie, I'm waiting for Charlie to say, uh-uh, I'm on the phone with my lawyer right the fuck now. Beep, 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 beep. What's going on? Girl, she was there for her sister. Just let her cry. I love the progression that Charlie and Nova's relationship has come to. I love that classic scene where they're sitting there and she's trying to take down her hair. Anytime I see that in a movie with black people, sisters, mothers and daughters, cousins, whatever, I always love it, okay? It's just so symbolic, you know, I don't know what it's symbolic of, but it's just so symbolic. <laughs> but basically, Charlie was trying to tell Nova, listen, they want you to feel like you ain't shitting right now, okay? Like you didn't just been defeated, but this is the time where you, you know, they felt you they want you to feel like they took your power. This is the time that you take your power back and then they let that power grow because they gave you more by doing this, okay? Don't give up the fight for what you're doing. All right. So she motivated Nova. And that caused her to get on the phone with old dude in the politics and say, listen, what I got to do to run for Congress? Because I'm going to do it. He was like, oh, so what made you change your mind? Some shit that was going on with my family and not being able to help them the way that I needed to. So what we got to do? He was like, listen, we're going to determine whether or not you good for Louisiana or for California. Either way, we're going to get your ass up in there. I said, all right, game on. Okay, let's go. I'm here for this now. We got motivation. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here like... So that means Davis got to go because we can't focus on him in this election and the family. Fuck Davis. He the, he the weakest link. Okay, Charlie, let that nigga go. Anyway, moving on from that, um, at the end of the episode, Ralph, he had to give the, uh, you know, meet up with Sam Landry on the land. I said, I really had that man come up on the land. And he was like, you know, um, you got 45 days. Basically, you got 45 days. Okay. 
uh, we're going to get these papers signed up or whatever. You're going to sign them and you got 45 days. He was about to start giving them a story about his daddy. My daddy once said, Ralph said, I don't care about your daddy and you damn sure don't care about mine. So cut the shit. All right. Say what you got to say. Get the papers drawn up so I can freaking sign them. He was like, all right, cool. You right. And you got 45 days to get off the land. I said, oh my God. <sighs> What's we going to do? And mama mama buried out there. They was like, we're going to probably take her up and bury her in the cemetery with Ed. I said, wow. Wow, Ralph. Wow. You just played it right into his hand. I'm so disappointed in you. Okay? Because I've been telling you not to do this this whole season and you just wasn't listening to me. But anyway, that was Queen Sugar. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about the episode. And I will see you guys later. Peace.